Well, welcome to this demonstration of uh, the Interact software package. Today what we're going to be looking at is a system that has been set up for a kitchen or joinery company. What we're seeing here of course is the typical main menu for uh, Interact and what we're going to do first up is go into the jobs database. You can see it's highlighted here as menu number three and what we're going to do is have a look at the scheduling aspects of uh, Interact in particular scheduling a sales appointment, uh, scheduling production operations which of course link into the alert diary. We can see the alert diary here on the main menu and also uh, link into Interact's visual calendar. We'll have a brief look at estimating, although of course there's a separate uh, video on estimating and quotes, uh, quotations in relation to estimates. Uh, we'll also have a look at project management, uh, managing this project through its different uh, phases. And also we'll be looking at the question and answer system, uh, where you can set up standard sets of questions in relation to a job and obviously record the answers underneath that job as well. And we'll have a brief look at uh, Interact job transactions. Okay, without further ado, let's go into the uh, uh, jobs database now. It's menu number three. Just click on that. It comes up automatically with the job search screen where you can search on any combination or permutation of these fields. Uh, the job number or the job name if you don't know the job number. The job type or category. Uh, these are little uh, allowed value lookups if you like. In this case, I've only got a couple of uh, sample jobs. So I'm just going to press on the start search button or press enter if you prefer and it brings up a little list of jobs. Uh, the one I'm going to be looking at is this first one, which is remove the existing kitchen and install a new one. By the way, uh, right down in this bottom corner here, you can see uh, an image folder with images in relation to that job. But a little bit more on that, I'll call the, the job up. So by clicking on that, or selecting line number one. And here is what we call the job header screen. It heads up all the information in relation to this one job. Uh, you can see it's been allocated automatically a job number as well as a job ID which is made up of the client's name and the job number. Uh, various dates of when we first input it and when we're starting the work on it, when it's been completed. Um, the uh, client contact name, in this case it's not a business, it's just an individual or a couple, uh, it looks like a husband and wife team here. Uh, the site address. Uh, you can add new or go and link in uh, to add new clients here automatically where it says view client or indeed add extra contact names or site addresses if you want to. Uh, this is where you link into the document register. We're seeing some documents here uh, where we can move through and see, in this case, photographs. Um, if we've got a drawing or something of that nature, uh, we can click on that and see that as well. Here we've got the job name, uh, just some brief financial information. So what we'll do now is just um, Oh, by the way, some of these other buttons here. Uh, because we've got the address, we can click on this map button. It will link to Google Maps and show us where this job site location is. Or indeed, the directions button will allow us to link into Google again and show us directions from your office to this particular site address. The manual and video uh, is a little mini manual on this topic, which on right into the screen, which of course is job costing, and a video on the same topic. Okay, so let's have a little look at uh, what we've got here. Uh, menu number one, uh, by the way, is the kitchen uh, scheduling system. It's an it's a optional software module with Interact. And let's just have a quick look at that. Uh, watch this first screen here is a summary of all the key dates. You can see I've already started this job and done uh, an estimate here. We've prepared a quotation. We've got a factory cost. Uh, we've got a contract value. No variations to contract yet, although we can put in variations down here. Various dates during the uh, job so far of uh, when we estimated, quoted, when we expected to close the deal, when we did, did we win it, uh, check measure dates, uh, CAD uh, due and done, final checks, and when purchases were done for materials. And there's a lower menu, uh, steps one through to seven, nicely laid out which give us the various steps in a logical sequence from estimating and quoting, uh, winning the job and opening it up, pre-production steps. I'll just have give you a brief look at that. That's basically in relation to uh, check measures and uh, computer-aided design and final checks and approval. Uh, the, the win details is where you put in what date you want it, when is it required by, um, the contract value, if you've got a contract value, what was originally quoted for, and the payment schedule in terms of when deposits and other monies would be due. Uh, you can set up formulas to calculate that automatically. Here's some brief uh, 
uh, scheduling here already of just when we expect uh, that we might start um, production and delivery by nominating a number of days after certain things have occurred, like days after CAD is, the CAD design is finished, when are we going to schedule and start production? The main area here that's uh, interesting is what is a recent change is where you can uh, schedule production by operation and the various operations that you, you go through to complete, in this case a kitchen job, you can set up yourself, you can have as many as you like, you can determine also the sort sequence, uh, the sequence in which these operations will be done. Each operation, such as here you can see cutting a carcass and cutting drawers as an example, can be linked to and belong to a cost center or department. And so that when you actually put in a, a scheduled work date and a start and end time for, for doing something, it will automatically update Interact's uh, diary alert system for both the employee, if you've got an employee assigned to that particular operational task, and also for the cost center or department. There will be two entries effectively going into the uh, Interact diary. Now the reason for that is, is that you can sit, look at, at the visual calendar, which is again one of those optional software modules available with Interact, which will show a, a graphical representation of your uh, diary, of your work schedule, or your production schedule, and you can look at that diary for a, a either a, an employee or a cost center for one day or for a group of days such as a week or a month even. And so they automatically link into those diaries. Uh, and uh, as you can see, some of these operations might involve labor, and you can define what type of labor or class of labor. Some of the operations might involve uh, machine work. So this is part of the uh, uh, production scheduling in terms of capacity planning, because the system calculates, as you can see here, what number of hours will be expended for each of these operations. So you can search by date by machine to see uh, when, a, when a machine has been scheduled or booked and how many hours might be remaining. Now if we call up one of these um, uh, these um, operations, you can see what they look like. Um, in this case we've got the sanding operation, it's using the sanding department. Uh, there's no employee that has been assigned to it yet, but you could, you could assign an employee here if you wished to a particular, in this case the sanding operation. And then down here it's actually saying, is there labor involved? And we said why for yes, Yes, there's a machine involved. No, there's not a subcontractor. So as we've said no to subcontractor, the sub EID, the, the, uh, in this case, is blank. It's not input. But here we've nominated that an, an apprentice is involved. And these are the different labor classes. You can set up as many different classes as you like. And in this case, we've got a machine that's involved. And again, we've assigned the sanding machine. This is part of, as I said before, the capacity planning aspect. We can search on uh, what's, what's available in terms of machine time. Over to the side, when we're assigning a, a work date and start and finish time, which is down the bottom through here, if you like, you can check uh, the existing work schedule for a, well, it's saying the, the, the work date can't be blank. I'll just send it here. I'm not really wanting to put a work date in here. Um, but we can check a department schedule, what's available on a particular date. So if we said, for instance, we were going to be working on the 16th uh, of October, I'll just put in 16 there might say we're going to start at 11 a.m. and finish maybe at uh, 1 o'clock, 1300 let's say, and it's calculated that yes, it's going to take two hours to do that. We can check the department schedule to see uh, what's available, and, and indeed what we're just seeing here is what we've just put in in job number 003, uh, starting at 11 o'clock for, for uh, two hours. And uh, we can also check the date schedule. This is, uh, not, this is not sorted by department as the other one was, it's actually sorted by date and see what work's been done on that particular date. And also by employee. In this case, we ha this is the non-assigned employee. Uh, we can see what work's been scheduled for, for so-called non-assigned employees, which is a bit unusual in this case. All right, and when we've completed the job, we can put in a completed date and we can put in some work notes if we need to. Over here, we can set up our different cl classes of labor. We can set up our different operations. Here are some standard operations where you can see here uh, which ones have labor, which ones have machines, which in ones involve subcontractors. And this is where they were set up. So if we caught up the painting of doors and panels, which is uh, does involve a subcontractor, and it's been linked to the finishing department, we can actually then here 
If we put that just temporarily to yes, you'll see that it will put an extra button here off to the side subbies and we can actually go in and actually assign or I can create new subcontractors on the fly here uh, and assign it here through this field subby ID uh, the subcontractor that's involved and that would allow you to see what work has been scheduled for each subcontractor by date alright so let's just go back one step so that was the different production departments there now what when you fill this in, when you actually put a work date and a start and end time, what happens automatically, and let's just go back to the main menu, I'll just click on this button up here, return to main menu, the little home button here. Under the next menu down, which is the kitchen schedules, what's happened automatically is that the production schedule by date and by department has been already updated. I'll just show you here what the schedule looks like. You can see by different departments, by work date, start time, uh, operation here, what employee, and, how, and right across here we've got the job name and the client name and little work notes and everything. You may not see right across the other side of the page. Now that's sorted by department. This one here, exactly the same, except it's sorted primarily by date and then by department. So it's two different views, if you like. Back at the main menu, the diary has also been updated. We can uh, search by department here or by employee. I'll just look at the non assigned employees again. Again, this is in a sort of a spreadsheet formula uh, where you've got columns of data. And if you wanted to see the visual scheduler, uh, that would uh, take that same information and show it in a graphical form. Okay, what we're going to look at now is the visual calendar uh, software option within Interact. Uh, so far, what we've done is, of course, we've uh, been into the jobs database and there we've uh, put in a... Uh, uh, well, we saw a list of uh, production operations to produce the kitchen and we put in some dates that we were scheduling to start and finish dates and times that we were going to start and finish those jobs and that of course updated Interact's own diary alert system both for the employee that was associated with the operation and also with the um, an entry in there was put in for the cost center or department that was involved as well um, just to show you this in a diagrammatic format uh, this is one of the software, the software profile on the kitchen scheduling system. Um, we went into the jobs database and we went into the various operations to put in the date and time. Those operations were copied across uh, automatically when we uh, got to a certain point in the job from the getting started area where we set up those standard operations. And once we added that date and time to the operation, it automatically updated the, the employee diary alert system also the schedule by cost center and the schedule by date. And so this also, this little dotted line through here, shows that it, it updated the visual calendar as well. So let's go and have a look at that uh, visual calendar now and see um, what the, those entries look like in a graphical format. Well, this screen here shows the Interact visual calendar system. And we can see just one particular day here. If we come over this side, you can see I'm looking at just today, being the 16th of October. Um, you can look at a day, or if I just show you here, I'm looking at, you can look at a day at the moment, but you can look at a week or the work week, which cuts out to generally the weekend or a month or some sort of different view, like a timeline. And over this side in the settings area, you can set up uh, what are your work hours in a particular day, and you can just say, whether you want your calendar to show job information, which at the moment we do. But it could just show you sales appointments, if you like. And one of the other uh, things that I've actually uh, done here is to define whether I want to see employees or just operations. So in other words, if I want to see employees, I'll see both employees and or operations. Well, in this case, I'm just looking at the factory operations and the factory view of things. So these are filters that you can set up. You can also set up uh, what, in this case, what um, uh, branches or departments, if you like, and you can just look at delivery schedules, if you like, if you wanted just to see one, one aspect, or board cutting. So you could select one or more, as I've got here, quite a few different departments or cost centers that I want to view, but you can select that as well. You could, again, just select the production department, as I've done, the sales department only, or service, if you've got a service situation. So you can filter them, and again, just by ticking 
what departments you want to view, you can see it. And, so, and what we're looking at here, of course, is uh, two appointments made uh, on, a, on Tuesday, in this case, the check measure. Uh, we'll, over the side, we've got a standing job uh, for, from this time to this time. We can, in this, in the visual calendar, change the date, change the time if we want to do that, and it'll automatically change back in the Interact database. We can also uh, mark uh, a date uh, or time and create a new entry here and uh, define the, um, in this case, what employee or department, and you can define the job, and it will go again and update the Interact database from the visual calendar. We can put these little sidebars away, tuck them away, and put them in a little um, uh, tab on the side if we want to take a little less room and see more of the schedule uh, just by putting them on the sidebar. All right, so that's the visual calendar. It's just a visual way of looking at a day or a week for one employee or for a whole bunch of employees or one cost center or department or a whole range of cost centers and seeing, seeing visually, obviously highlighting where you've got gaps in your work schedule. Okay, well, we're back at the main menu. We've just had a look at that visual calendar uh, uh, option that we have with Interact. And what we're going to do now is go back into the jobs database and have a look at some more detail that's underneath the job. Now, it's only an overview of this dem video demonstration, of course. Let's call up back up that job. And uh, back here at the, at, this is the job header again, as you'll be familiar with now. And what I'm going to do is just show you menu number one, which is make a, uh, a sales appointment. It doesn't have to be a sales appointment, but make, could be an appointment for any uh, employee. And basically, this allows you to uh, key in with very few keystrokes uh, a, an appointment that's going to be made for an employee. And I'll just call it one of these here, the initial visit. Um, and it will pull together and produce a, a report. I'll just print that report out. Now, that report may not be printed. It may be sent as an email to the uh, kitchen designer or estimator that's going out on site to do the work. And here it combines details of both the job and the client with their phone contact details. It, allows, it shows contact history and contact names and allows them to add uh, the last action performed and just some general notes which will be handed back into the office and hopefully um, updated into the Interact database. So this is just an interface that updates the diary and of course the visual calendar if you have that option as well. Now we did before have a look at production schedulings and uh, we did more particularly look at the production scheduling by breaking down by the various operations. And so we skipped a couple of points there in terms of the estimating, which I'm going to have a quick look at. We have done an estimate for this job, a detailed estimate as we call. We do have the option of doing a, um, I'll just widen the screen here for you, uh, a summary estimate, but that's not that common within the kitchen joinery uh, industry, if you like. So this is a detailed estimate. So let's call up uh, that estimate. By the way, one job can have multiple estimates, of course. Uh, that might be where they have an initial idea of what they want and then they change their mind. And we might copy in an estimate from another job to form a sort of a template uh, or you know standard form, if you like. Or it may be that we do an estimate for uh, once the job's commenced for, say, a variation to contract. OK, I'll call up this estimate. And this first screen shows a, a broad uh, summary of the estimate, and it's broken down by cost group, as you can see, labor, subcontractors, materials, sundries, machines, and a bit of overhead recovery there as well, and the total cost. And then we've got the markup of that to a sell price, again, by those same cost groups. And it shows what we should uh, sell and invoice that particular uh, uh, job for. Now, if we want to drill down into the detail, create the insert, that's just menu number one. And in this case, we've broken it down into sort of a functional areas uh, in a logical sequence, starting off in this case with CAD design and check measure. We've grouped all the production materials together, all the appliances together, all the costs associated, associated with the factory, the production cost together. The sub-trades have been grouped together as well. Now these phases, you can have as many as you like, you can call them whatever you want. And it may well be that you set up your job break it down into sort of sub-jobs, if you like, by the area, such as if you're doing a commercial joinery job, you might, for instance, have the, the reception area as a, as a phase and the boardroom as another phase. And that way, later, when you win the job and you've got the estimate becomes the job's budget, 
and the actual costs start flowing through from the accounting transactions against the job, you'll get variance analysis by phase and percentage complete for progress claims. Okay, so let's call up one of these um, uh, phases, the materials required, and this is all the production materials, which is the board and the handles and the screws and those sorts of things. You can see we've got a mixture of both each and square meters here. Uh, if you call up one of these items on the list of materials, it, it will show you what's available in stock. In this case, we haven't got anything in stock, and therefore it's suggesting that we're going to be uh, have minus one in balance left. And it, we really need to when we uh, this becomes the jobs budget. It will go into required to purchase automatically so that we can raise purchase orders for the items required. So part of the integration of the Interact system between the inventory control system, which of course includes purchasing. So when those goods are, uh, you raise pro forma purchase orders, you can edit the quantities required if you need to, have a little bit extra for stock or whatever. And then when the purchase orders are raised and, and the goods arrive at a later date with a let's say a goods received docket or an invoice, it will automatically uh, show against the job. And of course committed costs will show as well for the purchase order value. Right, so that's just at the three levels. Grand total, broken down by phase, broken down by cost item. If we, let's call up another one, which is the, say, the production cost, which is mainly in this case labour. You can see we've broken down the labour into different labour classes. Two people required for 15 hours in terms of a standard labour. We might have some machine time. Yes, we have. We've got a cutting machine and a bench-mounted drill by the look of it. Yep, uh, being used. And you can see those costs are summarised here. All right, so that's the cost estimate. And it's estimating not only the cost, but also what we should quote it for. And the quotations, number, menu number three, will show us the quotations. Again, you can have multiple quotations linked to a one particular estimate or to the job. And this might be where you've quoted different formats. One may be detailed, might be line by line quotes. I'll just pull up one of these quotes so I can show you. Uh, here's a quotation, it's who it's addressed to and who's signing off the quote. And the print format down here is an L type, which is the, probably the most popular. It's a line by line quote, but you could base it on the estimate and have it itemized right down to the last nut and bolt if you really wanted to, a bit unusual I guess. Um, in this case we've got some, in the lower menus here, we've got some uh, quote comments, which will appear at the top of the quote. We've got our line items. We're breaking down the quote into these different headings. If I call up one of them, let's just say electrical. You can see we've got a heading here at the top. And we've got uh, up to five lines of comment if we need them. A bit of a calculation happening here. One at 636 per the contract price. But if we had labor, for instance, um, let's just call up labor. Or oh, CAD design here possibly would be a good example. We've got 15 hours at $95 an hour plus some consumables of $45 for the CAD design. You can see you can do the calculations. Uh, we can also have uh, quote options, as many of those as you like. They will appear on the quote of course. Quote clauses. You can, can, you can uh, select which clauses you want and you can also select uh, what uh, the clause text is about and the sequence in which you want them to print. You have a whole library of your own clauses there. Let's print the quotation. Again, this, could, this quotation may be printed and mailed. It's set up to go into a window-faced envelope. But you can also, of course, create a PDF file or indeed do a straight email uh, with some extra text if you need that. Here's, here's an example, one of several different layouts that you may wish to consider for your quotation. Address to our client here, job name, job number, dear Anthony and Marie in this case, and some... Um, comments, those, those comments that where they appear, and then we're breaking down the, the quote, in this case line by line as we describe it, and one line can have up to five lines of comment, this one's got four, and you can have values or not values, I'll just go to page two, I'll just move, move forward, a few more lines there, page two, oh, page three, obviously it's got the totals, it couldn't fit on the previous page probably, it not enough room for the totals, and there we've got our options listed out here, on a separate page. And the last page, page five, we've, in this example, we've got the uh, clauses uh, appearing one after the other there. Um, and a sign off with the person who's, who's uh, the salesperson, in this case, the designer. And uh, we've got a place for the client to sign as well. All right, so just 
That's the one example of a, of a printed quotation. Okay, so that's the estimating and quoting side of the system, uh, or an overview of it. Here's where we can see when the job is won. It, those uh, headings in terms of the phases are copied off, copied across automatically, and we would see if we had uh, the contract sum put against it, broken down by these different phases. We'll be able to see the budget cost. Later we'll be have the actual cost come through. We'll see the variance between the, the actual and the adjusted budget, variations to contract, what works orders and purchase orders have been let, which is the part of the initial committed cost. That's been where we've raised a works order on a subcontractor or a purchase order on a supplier for materials. Um, we can uh, see what's the balance of committed costs as well, what's yet to be invoiced, the work in progress balance after cost take up, and right over here the, the uh, budget versus actual percentage complete. And you can put in a, an actual percentage complete and extrapolate out the cost to complete. It's part of the project management side of the system. If I just come out of that menu there and show you the next one down, which is tracking, and pro another project management aspect, this is where you can uh, define the, the number of days that we're going to, after starting the job, that these events are going to happen, these different phases. So it will predict out when we're going to start each phase of work, how, how many days it will take us to complete it, and therefore when are we going to expect to complete this the task. In this case we haven't got um, any, so we're going to start the CAD design on day one, we might then start the check measure on day two, uh, and then we might start work out uh, what materials are required day three, appliances we might also do on day three, and then we're going to do the production cost maybe on day four, the subbies might come in at about day nine, Quality control and assemble might be day 10. Delivery might be day 12. And then installation would be the day after. And we have a couple of days, so we might have day 16 for the final detailing. We might do some warranty work the following week. So there you can see it's actually showed you how many days um, from, the, from the start date that these things will occur. Might just put day one in there to get a reasonable date there. And the number of days duration might be just one day, one day, one day. Production uh, cost might take us uh, seven days to produce. Some of these might take two or three or four days. Quality control might take a day. Delivery would take a day, let's say. On-site installation might take three days. Dealing, detailing, one day. And so as you can see here, it's actually just... Uh, predicted out when when are we going to complete each of these phases and therefore the job. All right, so that's just part of the project management side of the system. Well, the next topic I want to talk about again is in relation to the job. So we've still got the job screen here. Is is to do with what we call questions and answers. So the idea behind this area of the system is that quite often when in the process of getting a sales inquiry and converting that sales inquiry into a into a live job and then producing the the work to, to finish the job and then actually installing it in this example. There's a whole lot of information that needs to be gathered along the way. Questions need to be asked and answers need to be recorded if you like. And so what you can do, and I'll just show you an example of this here, is that you can set up a number of uh, forms and these might be physical forms that you have used in the past where you've got these uh, questions and, and space for the answers to be recorded. In this case, I've got a form called the Kitchen Features form. Let's just call this one up. And each form could have a series of questions. So let's just go into menu number one to see those questions. And these kit questions are grouped under a heading. In this case, we've got questions in relation to the kitchen bench top, doors and panels and handles, etc. And I'll just call out the bench top uh, set of questions. Each heading, if you like, in this case, bench top can have up to four questions. Uh, and there's no limits to the number of questions, of course. In this case, it's saying, what's the bench top material? And the question type is what we call an L type, which is a, a list of allowed values. And, and we'll just, we've got date questions. We've got questions that have numeric values, questions where you've got just a text value, a yes or no style answer, or where the question's not required at all. But in this case, an L type means that we've got allowed values. 
And here, here is a list of those allowed values, which is a type of bench top material. Again, there are no limits to the number of allowed values that you can set up for yourself. And it will verify your entry, obviously, and, and make sure that rubbish doesn't go, isn't recorded in your database. Next question related to a tech, just a text question. It's a what type of profile is the edge? What's the thickness? It's a numerical question. And what's the colour? Uh, in this case, it's a red brown uh, colour style, whatever. The last thing that you can do here is define if you want to leave spaces before printing this uh, particular question on the form or indeed do you want to have a page break. And that's basically there's a little report that can be uh, printed out with listing all these questions on the form. Just another little note here. Menu number one is notes on answers. You can record uh, job specific comments or notes about a particular set of questions and they will print again on the, on the form. You can link a set of questions. In this case, these questions of course relate to the bench top. You can link it to a trade or, tr or, or other party if you like. And so in this case, the, all these questions we want to give to the subcontractor who's doing the bench top uh, and give them the answers that they would need. All right. So I'll just go back one step. I'll just use a little back arrow or the escape arrow to go back. So you can have all these different questions. And then what we can then do is print out the list. Now we could, menu number four is to print out a list in relation to just uh, one trade or subcontractor, but I'll, I'll print out the, the whole list. It'll just show us a bit of a layout of the so-called report. Again, this report can be printed or emailed or created as a as a file type, like a PDF file, if you wish. So here's our report. The form is kitchen features. It's got our details up here, which would be your uh, um, the Interact owner's details. Job details showing here, the client, site address, job name, that sort of thing, phone numbers job number, what type of job is it, category of work, who's the project manager or kitchen designer in this example. And then here we've got the, the different sets of questions. Right to the bench top, we had four questions. And here is actually the answers. Granite, round edge, 40 millimeters, red bound, uh, it's a color. Here we can see some comments that have been added. Doors and panels, no answers been entered yet on that. But again, we've just said, hey, we're sending the, uh, the polyurethane job out to find timber finishes to be done and so on. So this is just allowing you to basically record information, any amount of information uh, underneath the job which can be printed out in a, in a form format. Right, what we might now want to do is just briefly look at the transactions and processes uh, underneath the job and you can see them in menu number 10 there. And So on this screen, a rather large screen, we've actually got 76 different uh, menu items we we'll pull together all the menus in relation to one job on one screen. It saves you moving in and out of different screen displays. So everything here together. So it starts off with everything to do with estimating and quotations. And we've seen a lot of these files already, which is the detailed estimate, uh, quotations, the budget we've seen as well. There's a budget summary, which is just totals again. And we can have a look at gross material requirements, which is, in fact, gross and net material requirements. So it's looking at all the materials required on this job comparing to what you've got in stock and showing what you'd need to order. Then we've got everything in relation to winning the job, opening up the job, scheduling it if you like, scheduling employees, defining the contract value for the job and maybe breaking that down into billable phases so in preparation for progress billing. And we can see, uh, we can enter contract variations here as well, variations to contract. And then everything to do with invoicing. There's, there's several ways you can raise invoices against a job, both progress claim, which are, if you like, your RCTI invoicing, normal job invoicing, periodical invoicing as well, and of course, credit notes. And this section through here now, job transactions, uh, is really a, a subset of what you'll see underneath the accounting menu, where you can, of course, do job-related transactions under accounting, or indeed the job menu. But here, in relation to this one job, we can see all the transactions that have gone against this job. We can actually enter them here, but we can also view those transactions here. So that might be to view employee timesheets or expense recovery. It might be to issue stock uh, to a job or purchase orders for a job. Uh, works orders on subcontractors and their claims against those works orders are all shown here, just as we've got purchase orders and creditors invoices. So everything to do with job cost transactions all in the one area where we can actually view them 
and link to the source transaction. Then we've got some processes, um, such things as job notes, just free format notes, which have seen several notes files around. We can send out standard letters that might be in relation to variations of contract. You can set up your own library of standard letters there. You can record contact history under the job. That might be in relation to a quote or an estimate where you've had meetings with the client. You can be recorded. The alert system is where an employee, one of your employees wants to alert uh, one or more people, typically management, about a, uh, a situation or a, a concern that they might have and it got, that again updates the the respective employee's um, diary alert system back at the main menu. You can have employee work, work schedules. Task checklists, quite neat. Those copy across automatically to the job when you win the job. You can set up your own list of tasks. This is just an example here of 16 different tasks. And uh, you can define the employee that's assigned to do the task, when they're expected to start and finish it, how long the task should take. Again, that updates, not surprisingly, a, a task schedule checklist back at the main menu where an employee can search by date and see what tasks have been assigned for one or more different jobs. And, of course, manager can monitor that these tasks have, are being completed. Uh, there's the document register um, in, in relation to jobs. We did see photos attached to the job before, but, of course, it could be any document, such as a drawing or a... Um, a Word document. Again, you can click on the drawing and open it up, or click on the Word document and it'll actually open it up in Word as well. Questions, answers, and forms. Well, that, we saw that on the previous menu as well. It's the same um, access to the same menu. There is a tool lending database where you can say if a tradesman or employee takes a, uh, let's say, a literate saw or something of that nature out on site, you could have a lending library where they actually clock in and clock out those tools so you make sure they do come back. Number 46, the query sheets are basically allowing you to record questions that have been asked by third parties, such as architects and consulting engineers, where you can record those questions and the answers that you gave to that particular third party uh, so that you can print them out and send them. So, so these are the questions asked that you asked us, these are our answers. And it's certainly a lot better way of doing it rather than just verbally answering and then them being a, a dispute at a later date that, you know, you told me this, no, I said that. So that can all be recorded. 47, it allows us to link other parties involved with a job, and that updates their job involvement inquiry. So if we call up a party, uh, such as an architect or an engineer or a quantity surveyor or whatever, you can see every time you've been involved with that particular third party or consultant or the job history. Look, all sorts of things here. Analysis of job uh, revenue write-off, where you're uh, basically comparing what you won the job for and what the actual cost was and selling price should have been and you can write off revenue and analyse why you've, you weren't able to charge it. There's bank guarantee information, all sorts of things here. Now lots of visual inquiries which are basically financial analysis against the job. We can see these very big total financial summary which I showed you before but we can then drill down into the detail right down to the individual mini number 54 for example the job cost ledger shows every transaction that's come in from the accounting system, timesheets, stock issues, purchases, expense recoveries, all those transactions that have hit the job. And you can call those transactions up if you need to and link back into the source of the transaction to query it. You can get summaries by month of, of costs and revenue against this particular job. That's useful for long running jobs. And of course, there's a, a swag of different reports and report generators and configurators where you can create your own report designs. But it's always a, a good idea to have in your budget a contingency fund for designing the perfect uh, report that's going to suit you. Uh, basically, if you can pinch, show a pencil rough or put it up on a whiteboard of what your most ideal report would be, if the information's in the database, we can create that report design personalised for you. Of course, if the information isn't in the database, it's a simple matter for us to personalise the database to, to make sure that information is there.